and welcome. I'm so glad you're all here. We are now going to be talking all about the colocasia, specifically the black coral colocasia, also known as taro, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, taro or elephant ear. So we ha they have many plants that are also called elephant ear. So we have the magnum elephant ear, different elephant ears in different shapes. But this specifically one is the black coral. And it's called the black coral because it has this black leaves. And as you can see, the leaf, it looks like an elephant ear, but it also looks like those arrowhead plants. And also it looks like the philodendron that have that, that heart shape as well. So I love it. It's amazing. I love how you can see all the veins. And also it resembles a lot the Strelitzia the bird of paradise that you know that i love it so much because it has this tuber like stems and it's full of water it loves so much water it's insane so this is a perfect plant for any kind of person that is like me that likes to water their plants and every time that you water the plants you feel like you know you're distressing away and you kill your plants and you overwater them so you cannot do that with every single plant but with this one, with this one, you can go ahead and overwater it all you want because it loves water insanely. It's a great plant to have it next to a pool, to have it next to a pond. It's amazing. It just loves water so much. So it has, I haven't seen, but it has been getting me a little bit of shoots to the side. So I'm going to see if I can propagate it here with you guys and also give you some tips of how to take care of it. So as you can see, the plant, the plant has some areas that are really dry. So when it's getting very dry, you can see that it starts like drying out completely. And I left it there hanging so that I could show you what we're going to be doing. And one of the things that you're going to do, if you see that it's drying out, you're going to take a scissor, any kind of scissor or plier, and just cut it away at the base, right? So one of the things that you're gonna notice with the coral, the black coral placacia is that the leaves, the leaves that they are like that black color, you can see that it has that really dark black color. And so it gets darker the more it is exposed to the sun. So this is a plant, if you wanna have that black color, you wanna put it in a direct sunlight area that it can take direct sunlight for at least six hours a day. And that way you're gonna enjoy that black color. In my case, I'm gonna leave it indoors because the zones that this plant can be in, it can be up to the zone seven, zone seven. Below that, it will not survive. We are right now in Maryland in the zone seven. And I can actually risk it and put it outside, but because it's such a baby, and I don't have propagation. I want to leave it inside first, propagate it, and then I can experiment and put it outside. And if for some reason it dies, then I know that I have another one, another backup that I can keep. This in the bottom is going to have some bulbs, just like the tulips and the all the other plants that we use for spring that we plant now in, in fall. This also has bulbs in the bottom. So many people just take the bulbs, and plant them then in the bottom in the soil and leave it there until next season when they're gonna start blooming again. I might do that later on, but for now, I'm gonna just enjoy it indoors. It's a great plant to have indoors if you guys have a studio, an apartment, or anything like that. It's a super fancy plant. You know that I love plants that have a big statement. I don't have a lot of plants. Well, I do have a lot of plants. I have like a hundred and some plants, but the plants that I do have is because I really, really love the shape that they have and I really, really love how they look. Just don't buy something to buy it. Buy it because you really love it and I really love this plant. So again, we're just gonna go ahead and clean around it. So I see another one in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up. Don't pull it, because if you pull it um, to peel it off, some people do that, but I don't recommend that because when you do that, then the bottom itself, the skin of the plant, you're gonna hurt it and it's unnecessary. So don't do that. So I just went to the compost, our compost um, mountain, and 
I got a whole bunch of soil from there and that's the soil that I'm going to be using. Many people go all fancy out buying all kinds of different material. For me, it always works just any plain soil and that's it. Just always keep your soil that you're going to have inside the house aerated. So we're going to always take the top soil and we're going to then just aerate it with the fork. And I showed you that before with Astralesia plant because if not, you're going to be getting all kinds of gnats and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and start with the process of transplanting it. So the first thing you're gonna do is, you're gonna water it, and I already did that. And then you're gonna start pressing around the corners of your pot. That way it's gonna come out easier. So you can see all the root system, super really engorged. Let me just show you a little bit. Look how beautiful that's it. I mean, I love it. And then you got beautiful plant. It's just so amazing. She is, she is gorgeous. She is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. You know what? I'm gonna name you Laura. Laura, like my aunt, Aunt Laura, Titi Lula. Oh my God, yes. Yes, Titi, this is you, this is Laura. So, we're gonna go ahead and take Laura. That's my nickname for the plant, but the plant is the, the black coral. We're gonna take the fork and we're gonna start breaking apart the root system. This is actually really good to do because it, it um, puts the plant into the smooth that they need to spread, spread apart. If you keep it all compact like that, it's gonna take forever for it to spread and you might also risk for the plant to just damp in the middle and get then die instead of actually taking all the root system around it and taking the water from all the soil around it so we're gonna go ahead and open it up completely to see what we have here and you at home you can go ahead and put some um, gloves i just love sometimes working with my hands so bare hands instead of gloves so i'm just doing this but you at home go ahead and put your gloves on let's see what we have here oh i can see a bulb already let me see that's it let me see quite well So in the middle, I already see that I can divide it. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide it because I have two plants in here. So right now, I don't see no bulb. I only see the root system without no bulb. I mean, there's a little tiny bulb right there for me, but it's not big enough. So it tells me that this is a baby, so we need to take care of it. But I got to divide another one. So as you can see, there's another division and it came out very easily. I didn't have to fight with it. I just follow along all the way to the trunk until I found that there was another division and it was very easy to put the pulling up apart. So if you see a plant and you're trying to divide it and it looks like it has many things like this one over here, it's coming a shoot right next to it, but it's not ready to divide because as you can see, the shoot, let me just take this travel out of, out of there. That shoot over here is still completely connected to the main stem. It hasn't created its own root system. It hasn't created its own little tiny bulb. So I need to wait for that. So if you feel that the plant is ready for division and you get to the trunk and you see something like this, do not risk it because now you're gonna kill the plant. Okay, so just go ahead and enjoy a little bit longer. You can see how it comes out. There's more stems are gonna be coming out of here. It's gonna be so cute. And you see that little tiny one over there. That's gonna be another division that's gonna come out later on. So 
why risk the plan? Why risk this division? Because I'm gonna just kill it. So just leave it there. So it can keep on growing a few months later, then you can go ahead and do the division. But this is amazing. And the same is with this one over here. We have another division right here in the side and you can see it right here, but it's not ready to be divided because again, it's connected, connected directly to that stem and it's not ready to be divided yet. Once it's ready to be divided, it will happen just like this one. You can see that they have two different big stems two different big stems, and then they just came apart very easily. I didn't have to fight with them. So that tells you that they're ready to be divided. This one doesn't have a completely separate stem, it's still connected. So if you don't have them still separated, then don't divide them. Okay, so we got two beautiful divisions. Well, from the mother, we got another one. So we have two in total. I'm gonna keep them in this pot because I want the pot to look really big, really fancy. And later on, if I wanna divide them, then just, I just need to take one corner and put it on the side in another pot. Now I have this over here, a whole container full of soil. So the first thing that I do whenever I'm transplanting is I like to put at least four inches in the pot of soil. It can be two inches if you want, but at least four inches of soil or two inches of soil, that's okay. Something in the bottom so you don't put the plant directly touching the, the, the pot. Okay, so let's do that right now. And I recommend to just have a tiny pot or a cup or something like that. That can help you then to put the, stuff, the soil in there. So I already put my base of the soil for four inches or so. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our plant in here. As always, talk to your plants. Love your plants. That's the best advice that I can give you to actually create your plants, make your plants grow. And they're gonna be in here and I'm gonna show, now that I have the, where I'm gonna be positioning them, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up with soil completely. I need to keep on filling it up, but because the pot is gonna be very heavy, I'm gonna put it in, this, in the corner, but I'm gonna be um, having the plant, and then I'm gonna fill it up to the top so that it doesn't, it's not too heavy to carry it to the location that I'm gonna be putting it in. But it's looking so good! I mean, it's amazing! And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna clean it up because we need to clean the leaves. It gets lots of dirt and debris, and the spider gnats love it, so they need to keep it cleaning. But we have a spray that my aunt Tika Wilda, well, she is an amazing florist. She showed me this spray, and I swear that spray is amazing. I don't use it that much, but I always like to give it a little shiny to the, the, the leaves every now and then, and that is unbelievable. So let's put this first over there in the corner. Now there's many ways that you can clean the leaves. Um, you can either use a cloth and soak it with water and then clean it with that. You can spray it with water, but I have found that that leaves um, water drops marks. So I prefer to use then a cloth with water and just you know clean it as I go. You can also use Vaseline or even oil and just uh, put it in your fingers and then just put it around the leaf but I don't prefer that because if there's dust, it just sticks into the um, whatever. It's like breezy and it's difficult to clean it then later on. So I prefer just water the most. That's what I do all the time. And then if I have like in really, I want to show it off, then I use this, the leaf shine. This is my aunt 
um, that is a florist. Awilda, she's in Puerto Rico. She is amazing. She has so many great techniques. I used to work for her, so that's why I know so many things about plants. Plus, all my family, they're just all come from farming and all that. So I, I know a lot about plants because of their family. So thank you all. So she introduced me to this, and so I don't use it as much because you know that I like to have everything organic and nothing that it could have, you know, chemicals. But every now and then I just spray it a little bit to give it that extra shine. So first we're gonna clean it and then we can go ahead and spray it. So I'm just gonna clean it with a cloth very smoothly, okay? You don't wanna break it as you're, as you're cleaning it. And whenever it needs water, you're gonna see that the plant is gonna start getting corrugated. So it's gonna start losing that elasticity and it's gonna start getting dry and crumple up like a paper. So that's telling you that it needs water. Those are signs that you need to be looking for. If you see also um, marks of like a circle in yellow, that means that it has too much sun. So you need to move it away from the sun. Something like that. Okay, so now we're good with cleaning it. You can do it also in the bottom, but I have cleaned it very well in the bottom, so I don't need to do that. But that, don't, don't forget the bottom because that's where the spider they love to go into the bottom of the leaf. So clean that as well. Está hermosa. Can you say hermosa? Beautiful, hermosa? Yes, this is hermosa. So now we're gonna go ahead and spray it with the uh, leaf shine. So just a little bit. how different it looks it looks it looks like a show show stopping you know plant it just looks amazing it looks like plastic fake and ready for a wedding show that's why that's a trick for people that do weddings this is what they use for the boom factor of your bouquet so that they look super shiny yes you found it in Johnny's community so just for people that want to know exactly what it is, this Design Master Ultra Leaf 659 Shine. So it gives it a shine, but it's not going to be super shiny. It's just going to be looking more natural. And also at the same time, it protects the leaf from dust. It's very easy to just, the dust that fly away, so it doesn't stick to the plant. And it protects the plant itself from dust and also from gnats and all kinds of stuff. So really cute, really cool, but don't use it all the time. But if you're doing like a flower arrangement, it's a great thing to have. And we are all done. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something new from the colacasia. So this is a great plant to have at your home, especially as I said, if you like to water plants, then this is a plant because this you need it needs water. 24 7 i mean you drink you put a whole bunch of water in one second and the next day it's already dry so this plant is amazing for you know if you have an area that is high in humidity this is one of the great or if you actually like me like to water your plants this is a great distressing plant so really cozy really good nice plant to have for distressing i hope that you had an amazing day and I wish you an amazing day as well. Enjoy your day. Enjoy the miracles around you. Share this video. Share the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Become part of the community. And like the video if you enjoy it. Bye, guys. I'll see you next Tuesday. And as you can see, we're doing lots of decoration of Christmas. So little by little, I'm going to be showing you the Christmas stuff that we have. Bye.